well then so um I, the other day I went into a care home and they've got like uh, signs up diarrhea and vomiting all kinds of stuff all kinds of shit and the real nasty crap and um, it's like uh, signs up telling you to be cautious and wash your hands and uh, only come in if, if absolutely necessary and um, it just took me back a bit because um, you know you're like oh shit I hope I, I'm not gonna get this this I don't want it um, and of course my wife's like, oh, I don't want you bringing it home. I don't want it at home <laughs> if you're going to get it. And it's like, well, I can't help it. But it just the, the whole sort of thing sort of took me back a bit, reminded me of, of days gone. Um, but mainly um, uh, Iraq. It just made me think of Iraq in 2003. And uh, towards the end of our time um, of that war, uh basically the, the there was sort of an outbreak of uh that well some would say it was dysentery i suppose uh i don't know about that i'm not sure um i have my thoughts on it um and basically people were going down badly with uh, sickness and diarrhea and of course being in over there it's not really a place you want to be down dehydrated sickness and diarrhea because it's it's not a fucking easy place to keep rehydrating especially if you haven't got all the supplies to do it and um at that stage there were people across our camp going down big time with it and uh the medical tent we had just for sickness and diarrhea of of the actual soldier staff, our soldier staff, if you like, um, was kind of filling up and uh, running out of room. And they were putting people on drips, trying, uh, or IVs or whatever the fuck you want to call them, uh, to try and hydrate people. And uh, some people were in the tent for like four or five days trying to rehydrate and, and uh, stop them from shitting and puking, basically. And uh, I hadn't got it at that stage for, for quite a few days. I was feeling fine. I kept thinking, no, I, I'm, I'm going to be all right. I've passed this. And uh, other people were going down. There was on the truck I was on. Uh, most of the guys were going down there. One guy went past me in the night and I heard him vomit over the back of the truck. You know, it's like, <laughs> um, and then another one went down and another one, you know, and um, I'm thinking, shit, I really do want this. And then off they go to the med tent, and you wouldn't see them for like two, to, well, three to four days probably. Um, some even five. There's one guy who's there probably nearly a week. Uh, <laughs> I suspect he might be just enjoying laying down all day um, and chilling. But uh, and the nurses apparently. But uh, I didn't say that. And um, <laughs> but uh, I. I remember getting to a point where I started to feel the cramps one day, like I was getting cramps in my gut, and I'm thinking, oh, no, 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 and uh, we were already warned that you can't, uh, if you get this sickness and diarrhea uh, before your flight, the chances are you're not going to be on the next flight out of Iraq. It was like, oh shit, um, I didn't want to stay there, so... I was desperately trying to sort of hold on to the thoughts in my mind that I wouldn't need to go sick. And, um, and I kept holding on thinking, no, I'm all right, I'm all right. And uh, my gut was cramping more and more throughout a the day. There was this one day and it was getting really quite painful, the gut cramps. And I was swelteringly hot and sweating. Uh, and at some point I seem to remember I had to keep going to the toilet, basically, to shit. And literally just like, watery, psh, gone. And um, and the toilets there aren't the best toilets in the world. They, <laughs> they're just boxes with a big fucking hole cut into the top, wooden boxes. And um, I, re I remember, uh, everyone was out outside, they were all sat, and we were reading books or just chilling out, talking. And I was laid kind of under a whatever it was, some sort of bushy thing, and um, or out of the shade a bit. And uh, 
I was sort of curled up a little bit because I was cramping and I was sweating and I sort of kept running to the toilet and I get to the toilet and um, the problem I was having was the smell now the smell is the sun cooking the shit in the ground and the smell is quite you'd know it if you if you smelled it sort of thing and um, that was making me also vomit because I was well, I mean, I was probably going to vomit anyway because of the fact that I was catching the bug, but um, or I caught the bug. And so I, I remember putting my respirator on to try and stop myself from vomiting from the smell. Uh, and I stood up and turned around and there's a truck go past, like a four-tonner, and they can look in on the toilet you're on because it's just a, a wall, but there's no lids or anything. And they could look over the top and this four tonner goes past and they're just looking at me with my respirator on. <laughs> I'm thinking, shit, they must be thinking, oh, you fucking weird bastard, <laughs> go to the toilet with your respirator on. But um, I I, uh, I remember just laying back down on the floor and the cramps were fucking horrible. That, that feeling was gr horrifyingly bad. Gut cramp, like painfully. And... Uh, I, I was struggling big time and um, I was getting weaker every time I went to the toilet I was feeling weaker and weaker and um, in the end everyone around me was like well you really need to go to the med tent now and uh, they'd seen the fact that I was getting up and constantly running to the toilet so they're all like hey fucking go to the med tent now so I got up and I start walking towards now bear in mind a few days before we'd watched people like just drop to the floor and vomit and, and shit themselves at the same time uh, I remember we were stood uh, around at one point and we watched uh, and one of the young nurses little blonde nurse uh, literally I mean I couldn't see her properly she's behind uh, sort of half behind something at the time but you could see like her head and it walking past and she uh, literally just dropped to the floor and um, like someone had just run up and smashed her in the stomach and apparently she just puked and crapped at the like same time gone and um, this was going through my mind obviously I'm thinking I don't want to shit myself I don't not just walking not nice and um, I was just walking towards the main uh, tent and um, I literally just like it was like someone run up and punched me in the gut like absolutely agonizing pain in my gut and I just hit the floor and vomited everywhere and uh, a couple of a couple of the other side guys come over and um, one picked up my rifle two of them picked me under the arms and scooped me up and were like right get him into the into the tent and they take me into the med tent and um, they're like, well, we've got no more room for any more soldiers in here. And it's like, what? They're like, we've run out of beds. Um, we've got no room. And they're like, put him in the in the vehicle, take him to uh, the nearest medical station. So they throw him, put me, well, don't throw me, they put me in the back of a Land Rover and they drive me and I just laid in the back of this Land Rover like, oh, I feel fucked. I was really bad. I <laughs> had had enough, like my energy was gone. I was dehydrated and I was just knackered and they took me to a medical centre and I remember getting out I don't know where I was I don't know how long I travelled for I get out and go into this sort of sandy looking coloured building uh, it'd be uh, I don't know sandstone I suppose whatever the fuck they use over in Iraq and I go in and it's dusty as fuck uh, no windows and to the left of me I look down and it is a room I don't know, say about 30 feet long maybe, and there are just lined up stretchers all along the floors and soldiers all over the place, uh, half dressed and they're just laid there. Some had IVs, some didn't, and they're just laid there. It looked like something out of fucking World War II fucking movie uh, of just injured soldiers, you know, and they're all just laid there in this dusty dark room. And they put me on this slab, I'll call it slab because I don't know what else to call it, table thing. And there's, I could see the sunlight coming through what was kind of a window and the dust, you know, shining in this, the light. And there's fucking all kinds of medical equipment out. And this guy comes over, the nurse, and he's like, uh, 
right, you're going to have to take this tablet and this tablet, and here's um, a bowl of water. And I'm like, I, I can't hold anything in. It's just literally coming back up. Every time I drop some water in my mouth, it's either coming up or going out the other way. And um, he's like, well, you've got to just keep drinking, mate. So here's your tablets. And I'm like, e you know, I've got an IV. And he's like, we have no IVs. We've run out. So you either drink or you die. So start drinking. And he's like, fuck. Okay. So I, like, I put the tablets in and I drink them and I lay there. And the next minute I'm like, I need your toilet. Where's the toilet? And he's like, straight out that door at the back of the room and run straight across directly in front of you. You can't miss them. So I'm running out that fucking door. I say running, but I mean that would mean kind of like cramp walking basically because I was in agony in my gut I get over to this toilet and it, the fucking stench was vile I mean it was fucking worse than the toilets in the camp I was in it was seriously fucking bad and um so I sit my ass down on the fucking cut out hole and uh I just feel my body release more water out of it and a tablet. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, the tablet just fell out. <laughs> I mean, quite literally. <laughs> Fuck. And then, then it's like, you stand up and the smell, it was like, and I vomited as well. It was fucking horrible. And the stench was gross, vile, seriously vile. Cooking shit and vomit it was vile. And uh, I make it back to the, to this uh, well, uh, death room, if you like, and, um, and the guy's just like, well, here's your stretcher, here's more water. He's like, here's another tablet, but uh, just keep drinking. And I just laid down on the stretcher and just kept drinking. And I don't know how long I was there or how many days had passed. I have no fucking idea. Because for God knows how many days that I was there, I'm guessing about two days, um, I literally just laid on a stretcher staring at the fucking dusty ceiling passing in and out of consciousness quite literally and drinking water when I woke up and then just like passed back out and all the soldiers around me there's like the odd one or two who were just sat chatting to each other but it was pretty quiet and most people were just laid there sleeping and just fucked completely fucked and uh, every now and again you get up and run to the toilet uh, after a little while running to the toilet eased off and um I didn't go as often, which was good, uh, and I just kept drinking water, as I said, and I stepped, after a little while it stopped um, me, like I was taking on the water, but I didn't have to release it, um, it wasn't coming up or going out, so by rehydrating myself, just constant drip, uh, uh, constant drinking water seemed to be easing the issue, and um, it at some state, I, I, did, I just remember looking around me and it's just like, it was like something out of a fucking war movie, you know? There's all these fucking soldiers laid there looking half dead, quite literally, on these stretchers on the floor. And there's dust everywhere and every whenever a sandstorm come in, it was fucking, the room was just a fucking barely see anything because of the dust. Uh, soldiers were coming in and going and nurses walking around just checking on people. And it was fucking quite horrible, really. And um, and as I say, I, I just kept passing in and out of consciousness. I was sweating. I had the same clothes on. I hadn't changed out of them, even though I'd been vomiting in them. But I guess I was all right. I had nothing with me. I had no. All I had was. All they had was my rifle, and uh, and I had my respirator. And that was it. I had nothing else. I was just laid there, completely monked out, and. Uh, at some point, now I'm guessing it was a couple of days, I don't know, um, my sound major, I remember, walks into the room and um, him talking to the nurse and he's like, he's got to come with me now, we're, we'll leave him, we're moving on. And um, they were like, well, he's better, he's not, he's not going to the toilet every five seconds, but, you know, he probably needs a few days, but it was like, no, he's fucking coming now. And... Uh, so I, up I got, and I fucking got into the back of a Land Rover with my son Major, and off we drove. And I, it was, I, it's hard to remember very well, but I, I was so fucking thankful that he turned up. I was just like, 
I'm so happy to have got out of there. It was fucking horribly numbing in there and it was so nice to get see a familiar face and be like right you're going because I knew no one else in there it was just fucking random soldiers knew no one and uh, I was so happy to be leaving <laughs> I was probably about three stone lighter uh, barely any muscle but I was that I might not have had that to begin with but um, man it was fucking horrible situation to have been in and um, felt fucking evil to be there but uh, such a weird experience um, such a strange experience uh, I, certainly one I won't fucking forget because it was so fucking bizarre and, and just remembering running to the toilets and whatever I drank was just like coming out of me and looking at all these soldiers who had exactly the same issue and they all looked half dead and I must have looked exactly the same and, and that room and the smell of it and, and just the dust, it was fucking pretty fucking horrible. So um, I certainly won't ever forget that. It was fucking horrible. But luckily I, I got back and um, it was like, right, we're getting on the trucks. We're going to, uh, I can't remember where we went. We went to like Basra, some university or something or school and sat in uh, Basra fucking, I don't know. I think it was a school. We waited inside a uh, a gym there or whatever it was or the school hall until our flight came in to take us out of there so um, that that was a fucking blessing trust me um, but I think I just monged out for like several days before this flight so um, because I was so fucked from from just not rehydrating quick enough I, um, I just had to lay drinking uh, slowly very fucking slowly so um, whereas p other people getting IVs and being rehydrated fantastically automatically I was having to wake up drink a bit and then pass out wake up drink a bit pass out um, which obviously was a slower rate of uh, uh, rehydrating so it was fucking horrible put it that way <laughs> I don't recommend getting something like that it is fucking evil but if you do get the fucking shits and diarrhea uh, the the phone, duh, diarrhea and vomiting. I highly recommend just fucking keep nailing yourself full of water. Just keep drinking and drinking and drinking fucking water and rehydrate. Um, it, it will help. <laughs> so anyway, that's enough from me and my rambling bollocks. Uh, thanks very much. Have a good day. Take care. Cheers, easy. Have a good one.